I now give the floor to His Excellency Said Bader bin Hamad bin Hamoud al Busaidi, Foreign Minister of Oman. Mr. President, first, I'd like to congratulate you and your friendly country of Trinidad and Tobago on your election to the helm of the 78th session of the General Assembly of the United Nations. We wish to express our deep-seated appreciation to your predecessor for the excellent stewardship of the work of the Assembly. And I could but extend my greetings to the Secretary General, who deserves our full respect, Mr. Antonio Guterres, and I'd like to commend his laudable efforts in order to achieve the principles and goals of the United Nations Charter and enshrined therein, and to promote peace and justice throughout the world. We would also like to applaud his support for his efforts to achieve the Sustainable Development Goal and to promote effective international cooperation in order to meet our common challenges. We hereby reaffirm ongoing cooperation of my country with the international community in this regard. Distinguished delegates, Dialogue is a basic principle, and it's an effective approach to the foreign policy of my country. It's based on peace and reconciliation amongst the various parties to conflicts around the world and between nations. We take this opportunity to reaffirm the Sultanate of Oman's deep attachment to commitment to the international community, and this with a view to establishing an international system of peace, one which is based on justice, equity, and respect to the United Nations Charter and international law as well as respect of sovereignty of states and non-interference in internal affairs. Moreover, my country appeals to the international community to stay attached to the United Nations system in settling disputes and resolving conflict and to resume dialogue as the ideal path towards peaceful solutions and as a path to negotiating towards a world that would have prosperity, peace, dignity, and security would prevail. Mr. President, these principles link us all and link us in the international community. And this is the path that brings us closer to meeting our goals and which is in support of our ethics. We will continue through the grace of God to support fair and just causes. The Palestinian cause is one of the causes which is at the forefront 
it's an injustice which has lasted more than 70 years. The Palestinian people, however, stand firm in their conviction and determination vis-a-vis -vis the brutal Israeli occupation, the embargo and abuses and violation of international law and Security Council resolutions. Moreover, my country, like all peaceful nations and communities, sees no other solution to this issue than the two-state solution and the path that was set forth in equality and through the international community's effort and that of the Arab Peace Initiative. The United Nations have a duty. They have a moral and legal duty to find a fair and equitable solution to this issue. And they have a duty to put an end to the painful suffering of the Palestinian people and to restore their legitimate right to freedom and self-determination to the Palestinian people through the withdrawal of Israel from the occupied territory since 1967 and through the creation of an independent Palestinian state with the capital city of East Jerusalem. Mr. President, the fallout of the Russian-Ukrainian crisis and the military and security escalation of the crisis are, in addition to the painful humanitarian consequences, all are a significant challenge to international peace and a challenge to the proper functioning of supply systems worldwide. This crisis and its consequences are a significant challenge to international cooperation and the world system which is based on the respect of law and the United Nations Charter. And thus, we invite the parties to dialogue and peace negotiations on the basis of the principle of harming no one. This should also be based on respect of state sovereignty and a policy of good neighborliness and understanding the root causes of the crisis. Mr. President, the Sultanate of Oman has put in place a number of programs and plans in order to adapt to climate change, and it is doing so to also mitigate the effects of climate change. Oman encourages investment in renewable energy source projects, and it does so based on the strategy of a zero carbon between now and 2050. My country will actively participate at the upcoming session of the United Nations Conference for States Parties to the Framework Convention on Climate Change, COP28. This meeting will be held in November in Dubai, in the United Arab Emirates. The Oman 2040 vision is a national approach to promoting sustainable development to meet the challenges to development and to adapt to change regionally and internationally. Mr. President, ongoing modernization of our education system at all stages of education and the results as a whole is key in order to 
promote the development of a human being and to make it possible for a human being to contribute to ensuring economic development. The COVID-19 pandemic brought lessons for all societies and states. It has then became necessary to review preparation and response to healthcare emergencies with a view to building capacity in this area. One of the most important lessons drawn was that that relates to upstream or early preparation, taking into account the various factors that are could jeopardize public health and also take into account technical progress and scientific progress. My country held a world ministerial level meeting recently in order to define solutions to resistance to antibiotics and the acceleration of cooperation at a national, regional, and international level in this regard. The goal is to reduce this increasing danger to public health and to states' economic capacities. We would also invite all states to encourage partnership in the areas of research and innovation in industry in order to develop alternative preventative and palliative means to reduce the effects of epidemics and to stop the spread of them. Mr. President, my country has serious aspirations to bolstering human rights, to promoting the instruments of human rights, as well as international agreements in this area, and to respect them with a view to bringing about an international community that is fair, that is based on the absolute respect of the dignity of all human beings, and based on religious and cultural values of states. As a result, my country condemns all acts of inciting violence or hatred all acts that would lead to discrimination based on religion or creed or race. We call on the international community to adopt clear and categorical legislation in this regard, to criminalize these acts, acts that are a threat to social peace and security, acts that are even threats to national security of states and societies. Mr. President, we are grappling with complex challenges worldwide. These global challenges include climate change, the spread of epidemics, trafficking of drugs and human beings. And to that list, we should add conflicts of various types. And as a result, we would invite the family of nations to uphold the principles of peace, justice, and to implement the principles of international law without any double standards so that confidence can prevail and to build trust between states and so that there will be prosperous partnerships between peoples. Lastly, we would like to wish this General Assembly session every success. May God's mercy be with you.
I thank the Foreign Minister of Oman.